I was working with the Strat Tourism Board and one of the things that we were really trying to promote was the music as part of something that is, is interesting and evocative about the state. Just as it happened, Randy Rain Rush from Canada was around doing some research on indigenous instruments. And we got together and he, he went off river to record some music and, and then he came back and, and we talked about sending a group to uh, Marseille, France, and so we asked Jaal Langub, who is the Majlis Adat Istiadat guy, if he could recommend a couple of Sape players. He recommended two guys from way in the interior of Balaga. So we al alerted these fellows, got them down. Uh, they arrived in, in Kuching with ready to play, but you know, not much else. So Randy put a set together for these for these guys based on their music. And then that was what was going to be taken to Marseille. So the next task was to arrange for passports for these fellows and winter clothes because they were, it was, I think, February when they're going. So it was not exactly warm in Marseille. <laughs> and uh, so when that group went to Marseille and, and uh, there was, they did some dancing. I think they, they did, they played their sape. They had a, a set of music that they played. And the response in Marseille was just, overwhelming. The, the, apparently people were in tears in the audience and and, uh, and then they, the group were invited to, to appear on a, a TV program and and really that was the, the start of it. We you know we thought well this music can can really hit the big stage and, and so from there when when Randy came back we, we sat down and, and uh, we started discussing with a couple of lo other local guys uh, Edgar Ong and Edric Ong uh, from the uh, Atelier Society to discuss, well, you know, can we put a music festival on? How, you know, what, what will it take? And what kind of festival do we want? What, what would be the, the best format for here? And that was really the, the start of it, uh, looking at the types of groups and, and the types of music we would, that would be best suited and how, importantly, how the indigenous music would fit in because ultimately this was going to be something to promote the state, promote Malaysia, you know, this, this music, and, and um, originally we'd be importing music from other areas, but eventually we'll be exporting music from here. We were both familiar with a particular festival in the center of Canada, the Winnipeg Folk Festival, which has been going on for, I think, 25 years now, and it's, it had a really nice format. It had a main stage, it had side stages, but the really interesting thing were the workshops. Interestingly, the, the, there was an initial bit of reluctance to put it at the cultural village. Um, the, no, the idea was that nobody would come out to the festival at the cultural village. And so we had to kind of um, convince people that the, the cultural village was a good place to put it and it had a nice place to do the workshops because originally there was, people weren't so sure that this was a, 
a good place. It was seemed like it was too far from Kuching that nobody would come out there to that festival. And I think we've seen now <laughs> that's not the problem anymore. <laughs> the selection of the of the music it really is, is the biggest challenge um, because that that really the, the the audience are coming looking for um, a particular type of experience. Well, I have the best part. I just get to come and watch, yeah. <laughs> this festival is probably one of the most unique festivals in the world. Uh, you can see that there's been a number of press here. Uh, I do know that there's going to be uh, information going out on uh, Reuters, uh, which we'll get into CNN. That's uh, live video coverage. Um, there's radio coverage going out. Uh, there's been Asia Week magazine has been here, uh, the New Straits Times, uh, uh, also a Canadian TV crew has been here, uh, so it's really quite something. Uh, Sarawak is going to be getting a world name from this, this festival. <laughs>
a connection with the good vibrations which seem to be like so few and so intermittent and so sparse on the planet itself because lots of um, lots of other things have been happening from wars to environmental degradation to loss of values and this whole thing about globalization and all these things which are happening those are forces which are cutting across the peace and the harmony that we used to have and so good music anytime anywhere especially world music and when you play it in concert not just as a presentation but together with all the other vibrations and you have a few thousand people from all over the world come over here that is a stellar event in more ways uh, than one that word stellar so I think that you know what this music festival is all about is one form of healing for the planet which needs that healing it's because it's a unique festival it's a fusion where they, we've got both local talent coming to the fore plus international expertise and you always see acts that are just on the verge of becoming extremely expensive and usually famous that goes with it so I enjoy the, the fusion so yeah I had a bit of a crook leg but I can I can just move around but I'm always here for the rainforest festival to me I guess it's the, uh, the whole setting the atmosphere the people the bands uh, that's why it's about the music I mean, I don't think you'll find a place like this, like this anywhere in the world. It's, it's awesome for a festival like that. We're looking more at roots music. Things that come out of traditions and then integrate and change. So I think it's a special opportunity for both local Malaysian music and for other traditional cultures that are kind of on the edge of a huge marketing machine to meet audiences with a similar mind. And so that's what makes the festival very special. It's very special because the music that comes out of here, we don't often get to see it. I think the World Music Festival here is just about the most happening thing that's ever happened in our country, and especially because it puts Malaysia on, on, the world, on the world stage as far as real music is concerned. And to be the, for Malaysia to be the platform bringing bands from all the continents in the world together to play together and like you like you see at the auditorium just now everybody came together to play country music you've got a ukulele player just around there who's like teaching everybody how to play ukulele now you know like, and and that's what makes this festival so great the live music the soul the, the passion that people come here with and the passion that they share with everybody else fantastic I came here four years ago and I was hooked from day one. Yeah, I've been to Walmart and all and nothing <laughs> compared to this. It's totally different. So yeah, I, I've uh, always been interested too in rhythms that come more out of the basic human rhythms of, of breathing and walking and running. You know, the, the stuff that you can feel inside you even if you don't know the language. This is one of the few events um, staged by Malaysians that is really of world-class status. And in this very troubled times of bombing and blasting, I think this is an incredible medium of, of peace. And you see people from all kinds of cultures just interacting and mixing around. And the, the ambience is just fantastic. And it's very free. It's, it's, very, uh, it's not inhibited. There are no rules and constraints. People can dress, do whatever they want. And it's just an incredible, incredible celebration of diversity and appreciation in each other's cultures. I think it's wonderful. And I, I intend to come every year. <laughs> Actually, that's a really important point about the festival, isn't it? When you consider all the, all the um, dichotomies and anger and political suffering that's going on in the world at the moment, that people of all race and creeds celebrate through music and build relationships across countries through music. And that's got to be a good thing, because sometimes you might not be able to trust the politicians to do it, but we do it by the relationships that happen through sharing the joy of music. It's, it's a very positive, uplifting thing. And it's an amazing Malaysian event. It really is amazing. It's such a powerful media music. And Ma 
venha tu festival for the last eight years actually right from the beginning uh, it's really great to see the music the festival grow you know from its humble beginnings to such a, a vast uh, event that you see today we have learned a lot and every year we improve well um, the team the festival who works with the festival we have a very good team actually everybody doing their part and you'd be surprised that you know uh, we involve every sector of our staff you know from the lowest level to the, the, to the managers and it's like, you know, it is a team. Nobody bothers about, you know, who you are, but we are working as an individual and making sure that the, the festival really works. And of course, you know, uh, we quarrel at times, you know, especially when the festival is, is uh, coming closer and we have a lot of uh, misunderstandings. But, you know, it, in the end, we are happy when we see the festival and people enjoying themselves. There's sort of a kind of satisfaction that we see. And on the last night, on the finale, you know, you have that sense of uh, fulfillment. That is what... Uh, it's all about actually. This festival is not a profit-making venture at all. Uh, although we get funds from the government, but that is just to uh, uh, to pay for the the basic things, the flights, the performance fees, and all that. But we still look for sponsors, and we are very grateful actually that every year 
We have, um, actually as the festival goes on, we have more sponsors now with the festival being very established. Now, in, instead of going to look for sponsors, people are come approaching us. You see, they, they have uh, seen how, how well the festival is and uh, they, they are approaching us to, to help out. So we are grateful to them also, because with all this, that's how we can manage to run the festival actually. I being the Sarawakian here, I am very proud that the uh, Kuching is holding this festival.
I try to cover the world, as in every continent. Don't always succeed, but I try. And I try to get different genres from the very traditional roots to world fusion, world beat, and everything else in between. Um, and hopefully enough men and women, but that doesn't always work. Uh, and then feel I need to like the music. <laughs> First, the idea was to link with some international festival where we can bring them in and uh, we are going to be part of the festival. And uh, in fact, we had a look at WOMAD, uh, WOMAD Singapore at the time, and we thought that uh, there are quite a number of WOMAD uh, events throughout the world. 
so why not bring home at uh, to Sarawak? We went there a couple of times, or more than twice probably, and uh, we thought uh, maybe we rethink and uh, we start our own festival and perhaps one day we'll be able to catch up with uh, what WOMED is doing or perhaps even do something different or a little better. By the third year, we were very happy that uh, the festival is actually taking international stature. 先日、マレーシアで開かれた音楽祭に人口わずか4000人という少数民族の子どもたちが出演しました民族の文化と伝統を絶やさないよう奮闘する子どもたちの姿を取材しましたマレーシア・サラワク州で開催されたサラワクミュージックフェスティバルこの民族音楽の祭典に唯一アマチュアで参加したのがマレーシアの少数民族クラビット族の子どもたちです民族の文化と伝統を絶やさぬため親から子へ歌や踊りを語り継いでいこうと4年前に結成されました彼らのステージショーはクラビット族に代々伝わるこのようなものですえ特に特徴的なのがこれホーンビルという鳥の羽を組み合わせて作ったものでえこれが彼らの踊りに重要な役割を果たします。They're comfortable with Sarawak, so uh, uh, that alone was very encouraging to us. And year after year, since then, uh, it has grown and it has grown very well. It's the best festival we have for me. Yeah. Better than we met. Ah. <laughs> and the beauty of this festival is we are able to bring forward the uh, bring forth the uh, a local musician. Good、uh, artists from the interior of Borneo to come out and、uh, show their talents. These are good traditional musicians. So then he brought it up over here. So then I said, This is not the way we make sampe. So, so this is an unsuccessful way.、Uh, this is for my, one of my students. And something. But now he's very good.、Yeah. He can play sampe very well. He sees his own. Ah, he sees one, he laughs at it. <laughs> Thanks to the rainforest、uh, for exposing sampe and、uh, our traditional music. <laughs> Santubong, s a r a w a k k a c h a village itself,、uh, they are so unique that.、Uh, You have the festival elsewhere, the atmosphere will be different. Kan saya sebagai bapa dia sebagai anak, saya rasa memang pemenang lah. Sebab kita kita sekarang sekarang ni kita duduk satu bumbung, ya. ya tapi、uh, untuk kumpulan、uh, nama kumpulan Pak Enal, Tabo Pak Enal, sebenarnya dia yang yang nama Enal. Saya cuma bapa, ya. Saya cuma bapa. Nah, jadi dari situ lah timbulnya Pak Enal. Tabo tu maknanya. Uh, Paluan.
in the olden days here, all of us are grocery shops. We sell a lot of rice, you know. We exchange with the Iban people for, um, you know, butter trading. We give them some overseas things like um, Colgate and things like that. Then exchange, they give us beads. So we, we keep a lot of stock. And uh, there's a lot of rats around. So we have to keep a lot, a lot of cats. Another story saying in the, it was in the book, saying that James Brook, James Brook, the first white Raja, okay, he was being uh, known as a Raja in 1841, the first white Raja. He loved animals, especially cats. He asked the Malay, you know, what is the name of this area? You know, he was looking at this area, but he was petting his cat. And the Malay mistakenly thought that, oh, okay, our white king, the white Raja, was talking about this animal, you know. He said, Kuching! Kuching! You know? So he said, oh, okay. So this is named Kuching. Thank <laughs> you.